Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. For this video, I'm going to be walking through the Unit 3A review and making the answer key for it. So as you're watching this video, please feel free to skip ahead to the particular problem that you're stuck with, so that way you're not necessarily watching this entire video. So without further ado, let's get going. Part A asks, does this function open up or down? Well, since the 3 in front of everything is a positive 3, that tells me that it opens up. The vertex can be found by taking the number inside and outside of the parentheses. So by that, I mean the 2 and the 5 showing up here. Therefore, my vertex is going to be the opposite of the number inside, so a positive 2, comma, negative 5. So I'm just stealing the number on the outside. Axis of symmetry, then, is going to be x equals 2. I'm just stealing the x value from the vertex there. My y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, something. Now, to get that something, I need to plug in 0 for x. So up here, I'm going to go ahead and do that. If I plug in 0 for x, let's see, 0 minus 2 is just negative 2 squared minus 5. Well, that would be, let's see, negative 2 squared is 4, so 3 times 4 minus 5. Well, that would be 12 minus 5, so that's just 7. Now, if I go ahead and graph this, I know my vertex is at 2, comma, negative 5, so out to 2, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Throw a point there. Since my a value is 3, I know that in each direction, if I go 3 boxes up, 1, 2, 3, and over, that will give me my next point, almost like it's a slope. The axis of symmetry, of course, is the line that chops this thing in half. So whatever happens on the left side of my axis, it happens on my right side as well. And I also have my y-intercept. So if I go up to 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I get two points just by knowing that y-intercept. Once I have that information, I have enough to draw my graph. Now, number of x-intercepts, I see one and two points at which this thing crosses the x-axis. I don't know specifically what those points are, but I know there's two of them. The domain for all of these, since there's an arrow to the left and an arrow to the right, is going to be negative to positive infinity. Remember, anytime we have infinities, we have to use parentheses and not brackets. The range, this thing hits a definitive low spot here at negative 5. So we're going to go negative 5, then it continues upward forever to positive infinity. And lastly, if I want to write this equation in standard form, well, if I know it's 3 times x minus 2 squared minus 5, that's really 3 times x minus 2 times another x minus 2 minus 5. If I were to distribute those parentheses out, that would give me 3 times the quantity x squared minus 4x plus 4 if I distributed everything out. And then we still have that minus 5 hanging over on the outside. From here, let's distribute that 3 into the parentheses. That would turn into a 3x squared minus 12x plus 12 minus 5. If I combine my like terms, I will get f of x equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 7. All right, on to number dose. We have a ball that gets thrown upward into the air, and it is modeled by the following equation. h of t equals negative 16t squared plus 80t plus 6. One important thing to note is that any time I find any sort of points on here, Instead of x and y, we're dealing with t, which is time, and h, oop, I'm not going to fit that in there, which is height. So instead of x and y, think of this as time and height. So we want to figure out, when does the ball reach its maximum height? Well, maximum, that's another code word for saying vertex. So to find the vertex, I will do x equals the opposite of b over 2a. If I plug in my b value is 80, my a value is negative 16, I will get x equals 2.5. So that means after 2.5 seconds, this thing hits a maximum height. 
Then it says, what is the maximum height? Well, to find that maximum height, I need to plug in 2.5 to the function. So instead of t, I'm going to plug in 2.5 and see what happens. If I throw that straight in my calculator, crunch those numbers, I'm going to get 106. This is height, so feet, 106 feet. What was the height from when the ball was released? Well, that's just going to be our C value, our y-intercept. So that will be six feet. I'm just taking the last number of the equation there. And then after three seconds by h of three, this means the height, oh, can't spell, after three seconds. Well, to find the height at three seconds, I'm plugging in three for my t value. So just like we plugged in 2.5 above, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in three for t. And if I do that, I should get 102 feet. All right, last one on this front page. We're given a parabola. We know the vertex. That's gonna tell us an h and a k value. And then they tell us some point that's gonna be an x and a y value. We wanna write this in vertex form. Well, vertex form is going to be y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. All I have to do now is fill in the blanks with what's then given. My y value is negative 5. My a value is unknown. My x value is 2. My h is a 1. And my k is a 2. Let's go through and simplify this a bit. Negative 5 equals a times 1 squared plus 2, or negative 5 equals 1a plus 2. From here, I could solve this out fairly easily to get a equals 7, or sorry, negative 7. So my function rule is going to be negative 7 times the quantity x minus 1 squared plus 2. Because remember, that was h and k from our vertex. And that would be our final answer for that guy. All right, onto the back side. Let's flip this thing over. All right, number four, given an equation, we need to identify the following information. Well, my x squared is positive, so it's going to be opening, opening upward. To find the vertex, I'm going to do x equals negative b over 2a. Well, in this case, it would be negative 4 over 2 times 1. So my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 2. My vertex is also negative 2 comma something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and draw in my axis of symmetry at negative 2. And then let's plug negative 2 back in to see what we get. So we have 4 times negative 2 minus 5. So negative 2 squared is a positive 4 minus 8 minus 5. That's going to give me a negative negative. 9. So that will be this point right down here. Now I could go up 1 and over 1 because I have a 1 attached to my x squared, or I could use my y-intercept, which we're going to identify as 0, negative 5, and that's going to give me a free point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whatever I have on one side, I also have on the other. So there we have our graph. Just like before, the domain for these things will always be negative to positive infinity for every single one that you see in this unit. Because we have arrow to the left, arrow to the right, it goes forever in both directions. The range is going to go from our definitive low spot, our minimum value, which was negative 9. That's the lowest it ever hits, all the way up to positive infinity. From there, we are done. For five, both A and B, we have to first find the axis of symmetry. So for both of these, we're going to start off with that formula, negative B over 2A. If I do that for part A, the opposite of negative 8, so positive 8, over 2 times 1, I'm going to get 4. If I did 8 over 2 times 1. For part B, if I do the same thing, the opposite of B, so positive 12 over 2 times 3, that's going to give me 2 comma something. To figure out those somethings, I need to plug my x value back into these original equations. So if I plugged in 4 for x, 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 3, if I did all of that mathing out, I'm going to get negative 13. 
If I did the same thing over here for part B, if I plug in two, my function for X, I'd have three times two squared minus 12 times two minus seven. If I crunched all those numbers, I'll get negative 19. So now we found the vertex and that's actually the hard part. So the hard part's all done. From here, what we have to do is write these things in vertex form. So for part A, if I know my vertex, I know that it has to have an X minus four squared component and a minus three on the outside. And then I'm just stealing the A value. The A value is whatever is attached to my X squared. In this case, it's a one. So if it's a one, I don't need to write it. I could if I want to, but I don't have to. We're gonna do the same thing for the second one, F of X. I know it's gonna have an X minus two squared minus 19 portion. But then there's also gonna be the three in front because I'm stealing the A value from that original problem. All right, we're at the home stretch here. Home stretch. So for number six, we are given an equation. Anytime you're given an equation, chances are it's pretty dang important. It says X represents the price in dollars. We wanna know what will maximize the revenue and then we need to find that maximum revenue. So two parts. Essentially, this is saying that we have to find an X and a Y value from the vertex. So if I do what I'm used to, negative B over 2A, if I use these values to calculate my axis of symmetry of negative 500 over two times negative 2.5, that's gonna give me X equals 100. So X is the price in dollars of the software. So I already have part of my answer. What price will maximize revenue? I know $100 will maximize revenue. Then we have to figure out what is the maximum re revenue. So to find that, I need to plug in 100 into the equation. So anytime I see an X, I'm gonna pop a 100 in its place. And after we crunch those numbers, we will get a maximum revenue or a maximum profit of $25,000. So 100 is the price, and 25,000 is the profit. All right, last one here. Uh, for number seven, this is all calculator based. So first thing we're gonna need to do is use this table to do a quadratic regression. So we are gonna go into the stat menu, and we're gonna edit our lists. Oops, and I can't spell yet again. Once you have your L1 and your L2 filled out with the X's and the Y's, you're then gonna hit Stat, and you're gonna go over to Calc, and then you're gonna find the option that says Quad Reg. Depending on which calculator type, whether it's a TI-84 or an Inspire or a Casio, that might be different option numbers, but it should be very, very close to the linear regression that we've seen before. Once you've done that, I want to go ahead and write the answer to this down here. The function you should get is f of x equals 0 0.05x squared plus 1x, or just f of x. For part B, we want to use this model to figure out the stopping distance for a vehicle that's traveling at 65 miles per hour. So we're given a speed. Well, once I know my speed, all I have to do is plug that into my function, and I'll have a stopping distance. What is with my spelling today? My stopping distance will be 276 and one fourth or 0.25 feet. And then that is it, ladies and gents. We are done.